Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, July 29th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's Invest 93L out in the Central Atlantic now. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, getting much better organized over time. Uh, convection with it is a lot weaker today. These thunderstorms are not as high up in the atmosphere as they were, uh, but there are still some, and there's a pretty well-defined center of circulation evident on visible satellite imagery here. You can see it's spinning, and uh, this is this is a tropical depression. The National Hurricane Center just has not decided to call it one yet, uh, but that will happen pretty soon, I imagine, probably later today. Um, but this is struggling already. Uh, I said yesterday that I think it will organize pretty nicely over the next couple of days, and then when it gets in here, we'll struggle. Uh, the struggle seem to be already beginning a little bit. You notice uh, that, as I said, the convection is weaker, and we have this uh, burst of dry trade winds, a uh, burst of African air coming out over the eastern Atlantic, already seems to be messing with these thunderstorms and preventing them from going up as strongly. Uh, now, one interesting feature that we can see on satellite analysis today is that you, you see this big arcing band of cloud here, and this tells us a lot about what the pros and cons are for the environment of the system right now. And uh, this arc cloud is the classic signature of a trade wind burst, and that means that the winds coming in on the eastern side of this arc are moving faster than the winds on the other side of it. So you have this burst of wind that is piling up and causing this arcing cloud. Now this tells us many things. Since it arcs out ahead of 93L center here, we know that the winds to the north of 93L are moving faster than they are down near the storm itself. And this means that if the winds are stronger here and weaker here, there is natural shear vorticity or spin that likes to form in this area, and that's really helping 93L get organized and spin up here at this low latitude. Now, that's the pro side. The con side is that this trade wind burst in this part of the world is almost always associated with very dry air, which you can see with these uh, scattered patchy-like clouds. These are stratocumulus indicating a very stable air layer and a very dry one as well, and uh, that's pushing this arc cloud towards the west to the north of the storm, and that means that this dry air is now going to be attacking 93L from the northeast and eventually wrapping around from the northwest as well over the coming days, and uh, this dry air may already be affecting part of the circulation even today. And uh, the problem with weighing pros and cons here for 93L is that if it's a contest between spin and dry air, in a heavyweight matchup, the dry air usually wins. In fact, the dry air is usually, it usually trumps any other favorable factor that you might have. If dry air is in the mix, it's going to cause you problems no matter how favorable the other parameters are. That's usually how it works. Uh, but this is the European model out to day four. You can see in the uh, northern Lesser Antilles here, uh, eventually passes just north of Puerto Rico, but it's really, you don't see much here. It's not even a closed low on the model. 1,015 millibars here, vorticity maximum, uh, really weak. And then it just continues on here and, and, and uh, dissipates in this area east of Florida eventually on the model. And here's the GFS. Uh, showing a moderate tropical storm approaching the Lesser Antilles. And then by day six here, it just dies north of the Caribbean as it makes it into this area here. So it's much more like the European now. Remember yesterday the GFS was much more aggressive and uh, made this a hurricane as it came in here and it continued to strengthen a little bit or at least maintain itself in this area southwest of Bermuda. That is no longer the case as of the latest run. We will see if that's a trend. Now here's the upper level airflow as of day five on the GFS, and you can see where 93L would be north of Puerto Rico. And again, we have this upper level low to the west of it and an upper level low to the northeast, and they are both moving in uh, opposite directions away from each other. This one out to the northeast, this one towards the southwest. And uh, this generally allows nice anticyclonic clockwise flow aloft to form and above a developing system. That is favorable because it's a divergent pattern and it uh, allows that high to develop aloft, which is what you want over a system. And we have this trough over the eastern United States, which would likely cause this to recurve, but it's also a favorable pattern for intensification because you can really get that upper level outflow to expand away from the system and let the air pressure uh, lower at the surface. And uh, normally this would be a, a favorable pattern. You can see it's a little bit, there's a little bit of wind shear here initially for the storm, but the, if this was a truly healthy tropical storm coming north of Puerto Rico, it would usually be able to take advantage of this kind of pattern in here. 
but you know sometimes the pattern can just be a little bit too stable this air mass even north of the Caribbean where the waters are warm we know it's stable here because the water is cooler than normal and we have this dry trade wind burst coming across north of the system so I expect it to struggle in here but even north of the Caribbean perhaps the atmosphere will just be uh, too stable if we look at the Canadian ensemble uh, by day six we see all these orange colors now remember we saw some green where 93L is forming yesterday uh, associated with the Kelvin wave that allowed air to spread out aloft and cause air to rise. Uh, orange colors here indicate air converging aloft which causes air to sink and that destroys thunderstorms or prevents them from forming at all. And uh, by day six we see that covering most of the Atlantic here and it may be that this pattern uh, this year in general, this is the kind of pattern we've been having most of the season so far, uh, may just be too much and may overwhelm this system uh, despite the otherwise favorable pattern um, around it in terms of wind flow and again the dry air and sinking stable air will trump almost any other favorable factor if you have stable air in your ingredient list for the storm um, it's likely to make the storm struggle so uh, bottom line right now this storm is organizing it will likely become tropical storm bertha sometime during the next couple of days east of the lesser antilles maybe a tropical depression later today and then i expect it will struggle to intensify as it nears the lesser antilles probably won't strengthen too much maybe a moderate tropical storm as we talked about yesterday uh, near the uh, the lesser antilles you can clearly see the airflow around the subtropical high here will will direct it west northwest probably just scraping the northern islands or maybe just north of them which means they may get the drier side of the storm by the time it gets over here uh, but there will be heavy rain squalls and perhaps tropical storm force wind gusts uh, for these folks in this area but there are a few days to iron out the details of the track and whether tropical storm warnings will be needed for those folks in there and uh, then by the time it gets past the islands in southwest of Bermuda, northeast of the Bahamas and here, I think it still may have a chance to strengthen further, uh, but uh, there are some reasons to doubt it. The models are less aggressive today, so we will see. Uh, the Atlantic is not very favorable this year in general, and this storm uh, may struggle like many others, uh, but we shall see. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.